power shortages, blackouts, damaged infrastructure. The U.S. electrical grid is under strain. Large sustained outages have happened with increasing frequency in the U.S. over the past two decades, according to a Wall Street Journal review of federal data, driven largely by weather-related problems. Weather events are becoming more frequent and extreme, so that's a real challenge for the system. And weather events the last few summers have set records. Let's look back to get an idea of how hotter, drier, and more turbulent weather this summer could affect the grid. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, says this hurricane season will probably be above normal. Last year, Hurricane Ida showed how a Category 4 hurricane, the second highest classification, could strain the electrical grid. Winds ripping apart buildings, sending this roof crashing into a power pole, snapping it in half. Hurricane Ida made landfall in Louisiana, knocking out some parts of the electrical grid. It could be weeks before the mangled, shredded power grid is restored. And leaving more than 900,000 people in the state without power. Then it hit the Northeast. PICO, an electric and natural gas utility based in Philadelphia, said flooding engulfed three electrical substations, forcing two to go offline. Ida left more than 60,000 in Pennsylvania without power. More than 40,000 in New Jersey and 22,000 in New York were also in the dark. It just goes to show the, the risk that, you know, the infrastructure can face when you have a, an extreme weather event like that, um, even more so if that event is stronger as a result of a change in climate. And repairing hurricane-damaged power and transmission equipment and infrastructure takes time. The turnaround time to bring the grid back can be really damaging. If your food can't be preserved, it can spoil, which is a problem because you can go hungry, or it has a sort of a, a medical risk if the food is dangerous. You also can't use electricity to treat your water if you don't have electricity, and we use electricity to make our water safe to drink. So if you don't have food or water that's safe to consume, that's a real threat to human health. It can take around two weeks to get customers reconnected in some circumstances, according to Professor Weber. Some local utility providers, like Entergy in New Orleans and Con Ed in New York, have implemented upgrades. But a recent assessment by the American Society of Civil Engineers estimates that the U.S. electrical grid faces a funding gap expected to grow to $197 billion by 2029. Con Ed said this year that in light of more frequent and destructive storms, it will invest in placing overhead electric cables and other equipment underground to prevent outages during severe storms. But hurricanes aren't the only weather event that can stress the power grid. Increased temperatures all over the country cause electrical grid strain and damage, which can lead to blackouts. It makes it harder to cool your house. It's harder to let your power plant take it easy for a little bit to recover, so they're more at risk of failure. It's just a real challenge to the whole system. That happened last year in the Pacific Northwest when heat hit the region. The all-time record heat is crippling the Pacific Northwest, an area where most residents live without air conditioning. In Spokane, Washington, heat forced the local electric utility to turn off substation transformers, which can't function at temperatures higher than 104 degrees. Blackouts lasted for a couple of days. They turned off the equipment so that it wouldn't be severely damaged. That's not the only problem high heat caused. Grids were also strained by air conditioning use. About 44% of homes in the Seattle area and 79% of homes in the Portland area have some form of air conditioning, according to the Census Bureau. If you have an air conditioner and all your neighbors in their houses, if we all turn our air conditioners on at the same time, this creates a lot of demand. About half of the peak demand in a hot day is just our air conditioners at our homes, not including all the other ways we use electricity. This year in mid-June, high temperatures enveloped a third of the U.S. population. And Seattle's public electric utility has already issued a heat advisory this year. Avista, one of the electric utilities covering the area, said they have invested in additional infrastructure planning after last year's heat wave exposed differences in electrical use since the pandemic. Substation upgrades that were in progress last summer continue this year. They don't anticipate having to proactively turn power off this summer as a result of the heat. Another contributor to blackouts is a lack of hydroelectric power caused by droughts. Hydroelectric power makes up about 7% of the U.S. electrical mix. It made up 16% of California's in 2019. Hydro is pretty constrained this summer because the West has been in a period of severe drought for a long time. And as reservoirs lose capacity, you know, it's, it, reduces the, it reduces hydroelectric capacity. Hydroelectric power is produced when dams channel the immense pressure created by a body of water they're blocking into turbines, which generate electricity. 
The North American Electric Reliability Corporation said this summer could potentially have lower than average output from hydro generators. Those served by locations like the Hoover Dam, one of the nation's largest hydroelectric facilities, may have already felt strain from shortages. The Hoover Dam can provide enough power for about 1.3 million people. And the dam has a large capacity. It's about the same as two nuclear power plants. And so losing two nuclear power plants worth of generating capacity, that's a real strain on the region. Every foot of water lost in Lake Mead, the reservoir feeding the dam, equates to about six fewer megawatts of power generated, which roughly translates to the power consumed by 800 homes. Since last June, the lake has lost around 25 feet of water. If Lake Mead falls below 950 feet of water, the dam shuts down and no electricity is created. At the end of June, water levels were around 100 feet from the cutoff. Some states are looking to supplement the potential decrease in power. California Governor Gavin Newsom included an additional $9.5 billion in a May 2022 budget proposal to account for drought over the next four years. There's a collective understanding that utilities across the board are working to upgrade their infrastructure to account for more extreme weather. The events even of last summer and the, the threat of more events this summer has made that need very clear. Scheduled upgrades, fueled in part by these weather events, could lead average residential electrical bills to increase between 2.5 and 3% a year for the next several years. 